Hey everyone, uh, Sam here, and I've been playing around with Suspense in React 18, and I wanted to show you exactly how it works. So I made this little demo right here. Uh, you can see we have three components, and when I first render the page, uh, just by refreshing, you'll see that they each uh, fetch their own data, and they kind of take care of their loading state as well. Now, if I just pop into Twitter stats, we'll see I'm using SWR for my data fetching library here, but it doesn't really matter which one you use. This is generally how we handle data fetching within components in React. So we can see here when we don't have the data, we have this ternary statement, we render the spinner, and then once we get it, we actually render the card. But these three endpoints are returning the data in different times, so we have all of this flashing content. Well, this is exactly the problem that Suspense was designed to solve. And so right now I'm going to show you how it works. First, I'm going to pop open my root app component, which just has my uh, provider here for SWR. And I'm going to use a Suspense option and set it to true. Now, once I do that, every call to use SWR in my app will use Suspense. So if I refresh the app, uh, we're going to see this really helpful error message. It says a React component suspended while rendering, but no fallback UI was specified. Add a suspense fallback component higher in the tree to provide a loading indicator or placeholder to display. So let's come back to our index component here. And I'm just going to wrap this entire part with a suspense component, which we can import directly from React. So now you'll see something interesting. Uh, when our app loads, we see dashboard here being rendered. And then after all the data is loaded, we see all the cards come in. And that's exactly because of suspense. Once these components further down the tree hit any call to use SWR and the data is not ready yet, they're now telling their parent, hey, we need to wait. So we're going to go ahead and suspend go ahead and render the nearest suspense boundary. And uh, right now we can see it just renders a blank screen, but that's where the fallback prop comes in. We can just say, let's go ahead and render this loading message right here. And now we see that it says loading. So you can see that this is pretty similar to how error boundaries work in that we're using the actual JSX, our actual component hierarchy to specify loading and pulling that out of these components right here. Okay, so next let's go ahead and prove this loading message right here. I'll just define a new loading component right here. And we have a spinner component we can use. And let's just pass loading in as the fallback. Okay, so that's a little bit better. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and render this right above and just comment this out for now so we can kind of make this a little bit nicer. Let's wrap it in a div. Let's go ahead and flex justify center this. And let's add a bit of margin here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And now if we refresh, we have a much nicer UX for the user, we have a single loading state. And uh, in spite of the fact that these three network requests are all independent, they could be hitting different APIs completely. We wait until they're all finished in order to render the actual content. So that's how Suspense improves the user experience. But uh, Suspense also happens to improve our developer experience as well, because if we come and look at this Twitter stats component, we'll see that we're handling the case, right, where we don't have any data and we're rendering the spinner, but we don't need to do that anymore because with Suspense, this data will always be populated. If it's not, React will suspend and then come back and try it again and only complete once the data is there. So we can delete all this code right here, get rid of this little fragment down here, get rid of the spinner import, go ahead and refresh. And we see exactly the same thing, but our code is much simpler. So let's go ahead and open up YouTube stats. We'll do the same thing, get rid of the spinner, get rid of this code right here and get rid of all this code right here. And let's go ahead and fix our burritos here, Chipotle stats, get rid of the spinner, get rid of this ternary and get rid of the entire loading state. So now we can see our app behaves exactly as before, but all of our stats components are simpler. 
And we haven't broken the encapsulation of these components. You know, I can open this Chipotle stats component, see what API it's hitting and see how it's rendering the data. But the parent is still able to handle the loading state right here. We didn't have to move this data fetch or use some sneaky cache in order to prefetch it and then do it here. React is just given us a first class way for these child components to tell the parents that we're not ready and then to tell them when we are. Now, finally, the fact that we get to handle the loading state in the parent lets us do some pretty cool stuff as far as this loading UX is concerned. So I could go ahead and change this to emotion.div and I'll just import this motion from framer motion here. And let's just animate this with initial opacity zero and an animate of opacity one. And now when I refresh this page, we see all of our children fade in here. And we didn't have to change anything about them. From the parent's perspective, we're basically able to work with this entire chunk of JSX as if it's synchronous, even though these are kind of asynchronous components in the sense that they render in different states, they're ready at different times. Doesn't matter, as long as we're within the suspense children here, all of these are ready at the same time, and so we can use libraries like Framer Motion super easily. I can even get a little bit fancier here and use this neat stagger children property from Framer Motion, as well as this variance API to pass this in as the parent. And then down here, let's wrap each one of these in a div. We'll change each one of these to emotion.div, and then we'll use variants on these and then pass in the stat. And now if we refresh, look at that. We have this sweet staggered uh, entrance here for the children. Again, we did all that code in the parent. We didn't have to change anything about these. And in fact, let me show you how easy it is if we were to come here and add Instagram stats, I'll paste in almost exactly the same code here, except we're hitting the Instagram API. And then I'm just going to add it right here, Instagram stats. Check this out. If I reload, all the behavior is the same. The new stats component fades in perfectly and uh, again it doesn't know here in the child code anything about how the parent is handling the loading state so uh this really shows in a quick way some of the most powerful aspects of suspense uh you can handle the loading state of any component that suspends in the parent you can add new data fetching components deep down in the tree and they don't break your loading ui that you've already coded in the parent and they let you remove all of these states from your child components. So I've been using Suspense kind of in my side projects and been just super happy with, again, how it's improved both the DX and my ability to improve the UX uh, on the loading side for these components. So I wanted to make sure and just share that quick demo with you. Uh, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, ask in the comments and uh, go ahead and check out the description for a link to this demo. Thanks a lot and I'll see you in the next one.